Today, I'm going to talk about the Cloudbreaker Everest as well as the Ascension Mortar System Special and talk about how it works on your fleet and what your build could potentially change towards. Hey everyone, Derpy here. Welcome back with another Battle Pirates video. What I have here is the Cloudbreaker Everest, and mine is almost done, so you'll get to see me using it in the targets probably this week. So a high-level overview shows you that this thing does have better countermeasure stats, it has a better projectile speed, as well as the capability to fit up to six countermeasures and four normal weapons, whereas the normal ship can only fit four countermeasures. So this is pretty clear you want to build this as a countermeasure ship. It also does have a built-in special weapon here that will reduce an enemy's projectile speed and reload. The problem is that has to hit first and by the time I've hit an enemy they're pretty much already dead and they've already fired off several shots at me even a whole volley at me. So I don't think that this built-in weapon will be particularly helpful. So let's talk about the Ascension Mortar Special. This is a pretty interesting thing. It is a direct escalation to Explosive System 4 in terms that it affects the mortar reload, spread, and splash, but it also does give you much more projectile speed. In fact, it gives you so much projectile speed that this special does not stack with Strike System 5 and does not stack with high velocity rounds either. So you run into a problem. If I load up my current build on my normal Everest, you're going to see that if I were to change the Explosive System 4 to be the Ascension Mortar System, I can't do it because the engine right here conflicts with this thing. So you can't get projectile speed that high using the new special. In that way, it seems like it's almost a flop and isn't going to work as intended. But wait, there's more. We have to talk about the other build that a lot of people are using here. And this increases the projectile speed. Right now, the one I'm using has 143%. In 99% of cases, I do not shoot down all the mortars. If you have a high velocity rounds build, you can shoot down all the mortars here. This changes the engine and the K2 for high velocity rounds, and it has the projectile speed of 193%. This is a pretty substantial change, and with just a little bit of driving, you can shoot down all the mortars from the enemy target, which is huge. Shooting down all the explosive damage means you can shift your entire focus after that to dodging the penetrative stuff, penetrative armors, all that other jazz here. So this build here could work pretty well in turn and is the one that's working the best right now. But I wouldn't build your flagship like that. You want to make sure that first of all your flagship matches the engine of everything else. So if I'm going to keep my current build, I would literally just have to change to the garrison, let's go to garrison, load up the new flagship, and put on a whole bunch of, and of Gale System 4s here. I want to put on six Gale System 4s because that has the best performance, and you don't want to worry about missiles. Your other four ships can take care of the missiles. The first ship right here, your flagship, is so good with projectile speed, you should put weapons that benefit from projectile speed on here. So if I wanted to build my flagship as a projectile speed ship, a countermeasure tank, I would build it like this. You could also do a couple other changes here, changing out countermeasure loaders 4 for subaquatic propellant, only for the projectile speed. The other special, the, the other ability from the subaquatic propellant, which is the countermeasure reload, doesn't work because your gales are technically anti-explosive, not countermeasure, but you could just put this on here for more projectile speed. Now, when I look at this build, I just think it, it, it's pretty decent here and has a projectile speed on the flagship of 163%. I would worry this is still not high enough, so I would say subaquatic propellant probably the way to go. If I didn't want to do refits to my other back four ships, I would just build it like this, matching the engine and everything else here. The problem is, you can do a lot better than this. If you have your other four ships as the high velocity round build and have the right RFX engine on there, I would build this as a countermeasure flagship. What you'll notice is it has high velocity rounds and a bunch of other things here, and projectile speed, even without subaquatic propellant, is already 213%. So this seems like a really good option for a countermeasure tank. I'm thinking like the best build in the game for this option right here. Now, if you do this as your countermeasure tank and you want to do some refits to make your ships do more damage and work better, you could potentially, and assuming this, these six countermeasures are enough, refit your back four ships, regardless of what build you already had on here, to use the new Ascension Mortar System. Now, this combined with a flagship should allow you to do about twice the damage of your old build, as well as still shoot down all the mortars on here. It's really, really powerful. And this uses the new Ascension Mortar System, as well as which means you cannot use the Strike System 5 engine and you cannot use high velocity rounds. So you've gone with the other options here. 
Now the point of making this video, and before you click away, I want to make sure that you know what you're doing and you know what you're building. Don't just pick one of these things and copy it. I hope I've not been too confused and I have shot this video a few times here, trying to figure out what's the best build and option for you. I would say try to do, if first of all, if whatever you have is working, stick with that. If what you have works in the 160, the 170, and the new target we're going to get this week, stick with that thing. Don't bother changing it if what you have works. If you want to refit and you want to have a better option, I've given you some ideas here in terms of building the back four ships as a damage dealing ship, which doesn't need to worry about countermeasures as much. And additionally, you could also build the flagship, which is what I plan to do as something like this as a countermeasure tank. Maybe your specials change up a bit. Maybe you want, don't want to do for the high velocity rounds. Maybe you want to keep the same engine as you had on there before, but there's a few options here. And then a few other final notes that I want to talk about, regardless of what build you go for. I haven't put any armors on here yet. And if you're taking all penetrative damage, it makes sense to put on all penetrative armors, which is currently the best option is the Z1M armor. I expect we will get new garrison armors for the Everest at some point soon. I don't know when, I've got no information in terms of that, but right now a lot of people are running with six armor, six M armors right here because they're all taking missile damage. You also notice I am maxed on weight, so that's the reason I still have three countermeasures as opposed to taking off one of these gales here for another mortar and you run into weight issues if you do decide to put armor on here. So I hope this was helpful, gave you some ideas, gave you some thoughts, let you play around with some things in the shipyard. If you have questions, things you still want answered, feel free to comment below. I'll do my best to answer these. I make these videos to help you. And a quick thank you to everyone who supports me on the YouTube channel members for supporting my channel and making videos like this possible. As always, this is Derpy, signing out, helping you be a better pirate.